Hello once again everyone, Original Blood Ace back again. It's been five long days since I did my last video. It's just been one of those times where I just don't do any content for a little while. But, got a story here that I just thought, oh, gotta talk about this. Destiny's Halo composer, Marty O'Donnell, wins legal battle against Bungie. That's right, he did the music for Halo, he did the music in Destiny, and I don't remember if I did a video on this originally, but he was fired from Bungie, which was a shock back then. Uh, and that was sometime last year, I believe. Um, so, his little quote here, I'm happy this is over, and I'm ready to move on. So, we got some details, since apparently the court um, files are released to the public. So, let's just kind of go over this, uh, and we will learn a little bit more about, you know, Activision in this, and some shenanigans with Bungie and Destiny itself. So, the legal battle between Halo and Destiny's composer, Marty O'Donnell, and Bungie has come to a close. A court-appointed arbitrator ruled... Uh, this week that Bungie violated its contract with O'Donnell when it fired him, without cause, and made him give up his company stock and drop out of Bungie's profit-sharing plan. O'Donnell told GamesBeat, I'm happy this is over and I'm ready to move on, and he's the one on the left there, Marty. O'Donnell was awarded at least $142,500 through the first payment of the Profit Participation Program. A previous settlement from Bungie and the President, Harold Ryan, awarded O'Donnell $95,000 for unpaid work, vacation time, and legal fees. O'Donnell is also entitled to recover $192,187.5 Bungie shares, the value of which is unknown. Bungie is not a publicly traded company, but is presumed to be high. Obviously, they're Bungie. The veteran composer first filed a suit in early May of 2014, claiming Ryan, which I assume is this guy up here on the right, um, had denied him pay, oh no, maybe not, for the things like unused vacation time, paid time off, and other benefits, all of which Bungie's policies dictated he would get. Ryan and Bungie responded later in the month, denying the allegations and stating O'Donnell was not entitled to the relief requested. Or any relief whatsoever, which right there, fucking scum right there, Bungie. Um, what might be more interesting about this week's news, however, is that the court papers shine a light on the events surrounding O'Donnell's eventual termination, which came in April 2014. Gamesbeat, which first broke the news, has a great summary of the events, but the quick story goes something like this. The music O'Donnell created for Destiny, alongside... Uh, Beatle Paul McCartney was replaced with Activision made music for a Destiny trailer to be shown at E3 2013. According to the lawsuit, O'Donnell wasn't happy. Bungie initially fought alongside O'Donnell on this case, but Activision had its way, because they're fucking Activision. It was also during this time, according to the court papers, that a fallout between O'Donnell and Bungie began to bubble up. O'Donnell is accused of general insubordination in wake of the E3 2013 trailer music swap, basically meaning, you know, he wasn't happy with how things were going, how he was being treated by Activision, and, you know, he wasn't just basically being a little bitch laying down and taking it and still working. Um, uh, for his part, the composer complained, or claimed in the court papers that he was fighting back against the effect Activision was having on Bungie's culture. Basically meaning Activision was changing Bungie. Go for the big shocker there. In the court papers, O'Donnell says he was trying to preserve Bungie's spirit in the face of Activision's encroachment into artistic decisions. Basically Activision trying to control Bungie, tell him what to do. But O'Donnell was eventually let go. Uh, so, what else was here? Uh, earlier this summer, O'Donnell found a new video game studio, Highwire Games, with a team of former Bungie developers, the next Destiny release. Uh, meanwhile, is the Taken King, which arrives on the 15th. There was more to the story, which I guess was on a different page I was reading about. Um, but we learned a few other things. So, like, basically, I'll summarize it up really quick here. First of all was, you know, Marty and Activision argued because Activision was like, we want to do the song and the soundtrack for the trailers we show off. Marty was saying, that's my job, I've always done that from Halo to now. He's like, that's what I'm paid for, that's, what I'm, that's my job, you can't just do that, you can't kick me to the side. Him and Activision fought. Originally, Bungie, you know, should have defended their fucking employee that's been with them since Halo 1. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe he's been there since Halo 1. But, since Bungie, or is, uh, since Activision is Bungie's publisher, and they're the ones paying the bills, Activision was like, hey, 
Bungie, you want us to keep paying you? You want us to keep supporting you? You fucking fire that guy. So Bungie, being a little spineless bitch that they've become of a company, said, all right, Marty, goodbye. You're fired and without cause. Now, of course, it's one of those rare situations where the little guy in the fight actually beats the big fucking conglomerate company. So, good on you, Marty. You should become a freelancer like David Wise, my favorite composer. You know, he did Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze music. I always love bringing that up, and he's at Playtonic now. Imagine if... Uh, here's a little off-topic, but remember how two of the main leads from Retro Studios, from Metroid Prime, are at 343 Issues now, 343 Industries, but I call them 343 Issues. Imagine if he came from Halo and came to Retro Studios and did Metroid music. That would be fucking crazy. But anyway... Um, and then there was some other little details I wanted to go over, which aren't, you know, in this exact article, but it was in another one, you can look it up, um, in the court papers that revealed other things about Destiny, that apparently, like how the game was originally supposed to come out, what was it, September 2013, but apparently in August, one month before release, Bungie decided to fuck around with the story. I forget how it was worded. It was either they like decided to like cut part of it or rework some of it completely and basically stripped away parts of the story mode. That's why there was all those cutscenes that you can see in pictures that were or never put into the game. Like the Queen's brother pointing his gun talking to the, the Guardian. That never is in the fucking game. Now maybe they'll sell it to you later as DLC, but... You know, it exposes more and more here that Bungie was purposefully, whether they wanted to or not, maybe Activision made them, whatever, that they stripped story content from their game. And which goes right back to, uh, not Frank, uh, Marty, his whole thing about Activision trying to change Bungie and get rid of their, their cultural way, their system that they've set up, which, let's be honest, fucking happened. And then the other thing I want to just quickly say before I wrap this up was apparently in the court documents... Uh, I forget if it was Bungie or Activision said, or had it listed that Bungie, or not Bungie, that Destiny is going to be a five-part franchise, with a new Destiny basically coming out every other year. So every two years, Destiny, Destiny 2, Destiny 3, Destiny 4, Destiny 5. Now that fits with that whole, Destiny is a ten-year plan thing. Um, but after all this, you know bad shit has come to the surface in Bungie's reputation and Activision and everyone knows how bad they are nowadays and they used to be really good in the N64 days believe me but nowadays I don't know Bungie if you get to Destiny fucking 4 consider yourself having multiple miracles Destiny 5 I mean maybe some fanboys will buy it but I, I predict each Destiny, 2, 3, 4, and 5, each one is going to sell less and less and less than uh, than Destiny 1. Destiny had a great initial hype base, you know, hype boost. It was sold well, made your profit in, like, the first fucking day back. But, you know, I Destiny 2 is just going to go down. Destiny 3 is going to go down. Destiny 4 is going to go down. And Destiny 5 will be the worst-selling one yet. Now, granted, you're probably going to, you know, fan that old hype fan, you know, blow the, the embers in, that are, you know, petering out and try and revamp your fire. You know, try and light a fire under everyone's ass and be like, oh, Destiny 4, it's the best game ever. Oh, i got to pre-order that shit. But only morons and fanboys are going to be left buying your shit. Either way, I'm Original Bloody. As always, stay tuned. More videos coming soon. We'll see you then.